What's up, what's up guys, Simon here. In this video, I wanted to go ahead and talk about building relationship with your authorized dealer for Rolex, Patek, Audemars, or any of these brands of luxury watches that you want to get into and seem to have a hard time getting that dealer that will pay attention to you. Now, you may have seen a lot of my Rolex videos. I have put out as many as I could in the time and more are going to come. However, check out my Rolex collection video. There's also the latest timepiece I was able to purchase, which is the Rolex Panda or the stainless steel Daytona white dial. That's going for about $60,000 now. I bought it 15 thousand dollars it's a great investment but overall this video is going to cover what i do when i go into a rolex dealership how i present myself and some of the tips i have for you so that you are better off or more able to get that timepiece that you want from the relationship that you seek with your Rolex dealer. Now, this isn't just for Rolex. It could be pretty much for any authorized dealer out there. And then we're also gonna cover, do you really need a relationship with a dealer to have the timepiece that you want? Before I get into this video, I always ask that you guys like the video, subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. And I appreciate it. It's the biggest favor you could do for me. So let's get into this one. First of all, buying a Rolex today or a Patek or a AP or pretty much anything out there is extremely difficult. If you have been to any Rolex authorized dealer stores in the last, I would say, year, you would see that their stores are empty. It's just fake watches on display. They have nothing in stock to sell to you. This is done all on purpose. It's not just a production halt. The demand is very high, but at the same time, Rolex is making a lot of money, so is Patek, and so are the other brands, and they're not releasing as many watches as they need to into the market. The market it is hot. People have made a lot of money on cryptocurrency investments. Their houses, someone that's owned a home for 30 years is a millionaire and they're able to afford a $10,000 watch several times over. So Rolex understands this. They are keeping to their clientele, okay? And you coming in may need to be more presentable than the next individual. So first, let's look and see if you actually need a relationship with an authorized dealer or if you're better off going in and buying the timepiece you want. So there's the gray market. Market. The gray market allows you to buy the timepiece that you want. In this example, I mentioned the Rolex Panda. This watch goes for about $55,000 to $60,000 right now. Obviously, it's much better to get it for $15,000. So this watch may not be a great example because you don't want to pay so much more for a watch that you could get for so much less. However, if you are desiring a timepiece that, say, costs about ten dollars to $12,000 at Rolex, However, the gray market price is $20,000, so you may pay $8,000 more. But if you're not an avid collector and you're just wanting to get that one timepiece, you may be better off just buying it from a reputable gray market dealer, paying the premium and calling it a day and getting what you want. I will say that timepieces are addictive. The more you buy, the more you want, and it just keeps going on and on and on. And I found the same to be with garage gym setups I buy too much stuff that sometimes you don't need so check out my garage gym review video you'll see what I'm talking about in that video but if you are trying to build that relationship with a dealer some of the things I've been doing and I've noticed are first you need to dress the part now typically I make these videos dressed down with a t-shirt because it's super simple to do and it's easy and I could just make the video and not focus about my looks and all this. However, when you're entering a Rolex dealership, I've noticed that if I don't wear a nice Rolex or a timepiece, when I go into a Rolex dealership, they don't pay any attention to you. So how do you get them to pay attention if you do not own a Rolex? Well, then you need to dress up in a suit or in a button up. You need to look like you're there to do business. You need to smile and 
look very presentable, very attractive to the salesperson. It sounds crazy. It's almost like buying a Ferrari. They won't sell you one that's super nice unless you've had some of their cheaper versions or models and you have to build brand loyalty or client loyalty, which may be ridiculous because you're willing to pay the price. The second point is be personable, be very nice because that's how they will remember you, okay? When you're personable and nice and smiling, it's hard for someone to dislike you. So that is gonna get their attention. There are a lot of people out there that come in that think they're hot stuff, that they're better than the person that's selling them that watch. They have this attitude of, you're just a salesman or a saleswoman and, and, I'm, and I can spend this money. That's the wrong attitude. You gotta be humble, you gotta be respectful, and you gotta be very nice even if you don't get the watch or any attention. One thing that's great, I notice when I come into a authorized dealership, I don't go, what do you guys have for sale? Can I buy something? I say, hey, I'm looking for a specific piece. What can I do to get that piece? Or how can I build a relationship with you so that I'm able to get a stainless steel Daytona? And that seems to work a lot better than coming in and saying, hey, I got these five pieces I want, I want this, etc." Just come in, Say, I would like for you to help me or I would like your assistance in understanding how I can acquire such an exquisite timepiece, which is, say, the day date rose gold with, you know, a chocolate dial or olive dial or whatever you prefer. And you have to be specific and know the model. The same way with Patek. If you walk into Patek and you go, I, you know, I just want a Patek, you got to know that you want the Nautilus, say 5990 stainless or a 5991R, which is the rose gold, my holy grail, which I'm waiting for. It's about $100,000 at retail and about three to $400,000 in the gray market. So they're giving you a gift if they are able to give you a watch or get you a timepiece and you have to know what you want before coming in there. With Rolex lately, you cannot have too many opinions about what you can want. And Rolex has so many models, so does Patek and so does AP. So when you go into a Rolex, you really need to know what you want and don't change your mind many times over. I understand a $10,000 is a big investment for a lot of you, including myself. However, if I go into a Rolex dealership, I already know which bezel color I want, what type of bracelet I want, what, what metal material I want, and I am not gonna change my mind five times over where that salesperson's gonna get frustrated. So you wanna tell them exactly what it is that you want, and you gotta never change your opinion and take what they give you. Even if you don't like exactly what they give you, it's still a valuable investment. It's gonna go up. You can ultimately sell it if you need to and buy the real investment or buy the next piece that you want. Not everyone can afford to collect 20, 50 watches. So it's okay if you sell a Rolex after wearing it and enjoying it and passing it on to the next person or passing it on to your kid, etc. It's okay. But just keep in mind that you're constantly building a relationship with your dealer and you really need to know what it is that they're offering you and what you're asking for. One thing I love to do is I love to email my Rolex dealers and even the Patek dealer I'm working with several times over the course of a month or two. So I'll email them and say hello. I'll email them and ask them about this new model. I'll text them and say, hey, if you could get me this model, I appreciate it. I always show appreciation. I always show understanding that I'm coming in humble, respectful, and I am just trying to make sure that that person understands that I'm constantly there and I am willing to give them my time and appreciative of their time. You could also show up at the Rolex dealership. Let's say you live nearby or you live near a mall or you're near the dealer itself stop in every month say hello get to know people by their name even if you don't buy a timepiece from that location walking into a store and saying mike how are you today how are your kids how was your trip last month i'm just checking to see if you have anything thank you so much for your time just looking around i'm i'm a fan of timepieces and i know you may not have something for me but I, it just makes me happy to see what the potentials are and one day I will have something. That type of visit every month will assure and build a friendship that they're not gonna get out of some guy that just pops in, buys a watch, says thank you, and leaves. That, I feel like, is a better way of building a relationship 
than that rich guy that's popping in buying and leaving it may work sometimes but it's not personable and you want to get personable having your entire purchase history with one dealer has its benefits because they know you're a valuable client you could throw your weight around say hey i've been a loyal loyal client for so much for such a long time that i feel like you guys should take care of me it does help a lot however what i've noticed with rolex dealerships is a lot of their salespeople stick around and then they're gone. So they'll stay at one place for two, three years and then they're gone and you're stuck building a new relationship. And I found that to be the same with Hermes, which also wants you to build up by purchasing and then you get their higher quality or higher in demand items. Same thing with Rolex. If you build a relationship with a salesperson, make sure you also know the management, make sure you know the general manager and maybe even the regional manager. And that's gonna help you a lot more down the line in purchasing that timepiece that you want. In case your salesperson leaves, your manager could assign someone new. And it's happened to me about four times at one authorized deal already fortunately enough my newest salesperson is excellent and, and if you watch this video you know I do YouTube I love you and thank you for taking care of me as well most important the Rolex authorized dealer don't tell them you're gonna ever sell the watch or flip it for profit uh, they'll know if you are a gray market salesman or if you actually collect watches and you love them and they'll know they'll smell you out etc but this video is mainly for people that want their first Rolex, their second, or are looking to build their collection. If you're in the gray market or into flipping watches, you know how this whole process works and you're pretty much far above the insight that I'm telling you. And there are channels that are focused on the gray market there's a cool channel you guys may want to check out i think it's by roman sharf uh, he has a great uh, timepiece channel of how he acquires them and so forth and it's a big business it's a billion dollar business so you may want to check that out but i'm coming to you guys as a watch enthusiast as someone that wants to see you guys up your game from everything that you do from your businesses your entrepreneur life your success your timepieces and everything else in between so hopefully this advice in this video has been fruitful and you guys can learn from it and hopefully some of it works now if you have anything to add to it because my videos are not perfect and I'm not perfect comment below let me know if there's any other tips if you enjoyed these tips please comment below, give me a like, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I truly appreciate it. I wanna see you guys wearing timepieces like this and better, and I hope we all win. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys here in the next video.